Engine failures in aircraft are bad enough, but the ones you have just after rotate are the worst. And many times they're connected with bird activity at airports. Let's take a look at how this crew handles this one. Okay, the first player in this and the only player in this is Delta 1399. They're out of Miami. Um, I've flown in and out of Miami. I was based in Miami for a while. I've flown in and out of here 50, 60 times over the years. Uh, it's a very busy airport. It's a very large airport. There's a lot of bird activity down in South Florida. And many times they'll warn you about the birds at the end of the runway. But there's only so much you can do to avoid them. And so Delta 1399 rotates is shortly after takeoff, probably less than 1,000 feet. They're getting handed off to departure. And they've hit a bird and they're about to lose an engine. But the way they lose the engine is very interesting to me, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. Let's see how they handle this. Okay, so he said, say intentions, and he said, all you heard was the word runway. What you missed was he said, we just want to fly runway heading. So he gives him 160, which isn't exactly runway heading, but it's close enough. Gives him a slight right turn and up to 3,000 feet. That's very common. They're going right out over the ocean, so it's sea level below them. Uh, and they start their climb and they start their turn. But what has gone wrong with this engine? Is it really failed? Hmm. 3,000, I want to get to the reason. Bird strike. All right. <laughs> That's very, very concise. He says, say the reason. He says, bird strike. Okay. How bad a bird strike? I like uh, both engines. So one engine, a lot of birds, no birds. Are you, has your engine failed? Uh, let's see. Delta 1399 for heading 160, oh. actually 180. 180 on the heading, 3000 on the altitude, and contact departure 125.5. 25.5, 3000, 180 on the heading, Delta 1399. Okay, there's a lot going on right now. All right, so <laughs> I always uh, am amazed at this when I, when I listen to it and I'm not in the cockpit. He gives them a turn, he gives them a climb, he gives them a frequency change, and they're doing all of this at the same time that they're dealing with what's going on inside the aircraft at this point. So no doubt the flight attendants are calling up from the back. People are concerned because they've heard the engine fail or they saw a bird hit the engine. The people in the back are going to be yelling at the flight attendants. The flight attendants are going to be calling you up in the cockpit. You're going to have a phone in one hand, you're going to have the aircraft in another hand, and you're listening to ATC in the other. That's why it's so important to have two experienced pilots up in the cockpit. If you don't have two pilots up in the cockpit, one person would be handling all of this. And so, you know, for those of you who are talking about technology in the future and going down to one pilot, th this is not the wave of the future. You don't want that. Let's see how they handle this, both of them. And that's a 1389. You're to Miami Airport, be a radar vector, respect from United. Well, okay, so the the air traffic controller is giving the aircraft his intentions. Expect runway nine. That helps them get set up. They can bring up the approach. They can brief that approach. They're not turning for runway nine just yet. They've got a lot of stuff to do, and you're going to see they're going to slow down a little bit. We still don't know exactly what's wrong with this engine. Uh, was it a total engine failure or not? Well, they're going to dole out the information here a little bit, and I'll explain one part of this because one part of it doesn't make any sense. Hey, uh, departure Delta 1399, 2.4, climate 3, heading 180, emergency aircraft. We'll be right back, but first, a quick word from our sponsor. So here's something they don't tell you before you become a pilot. You don't fly between gates, you speed walk between gates like an Olympic athlete who's forgot his coffee. So you ever try dodging families or carry-ons or those random people that just kind of stop mid-hallway to check their phone? That's a level three hazard. Oh, sorry. But thanks to these bad boys, my Vessi Pacific sneakers, my feet stay drier than an in-flight pretzel. They're waterproof, breathable, and they slip on faster than a gate change at O'Hare. So they're lightweight, they've got a cushioned heel lock, they grip tighter than an F-18 on a tail hook, and I can make a 12 minute connection in just nine minutes with these bad boys. So if your adventure is racing through the terminal or just surviving a surprise rainstorm, your feet need better gear. Your next adventure starts with dry, comfortable steps, no matter the terrain. Explore freely at Vessi Pacific Sneakers. 
Get 15% off your first pair of shoes at Vessi.com slash Steve, plus a one-year warranty and a 30-day return. And special thanks to Vessi. Sponsors like this help us to make more content for you. Now, back to the video. Okay, he got a little ahead of himself. He said emergency aircraft. Now, after you declare an emergency, either a pan-pan or a mayday-mayday, then every transmission you make after that, you just tag on the end, emergency aircraft, right? Especially when you get a frequency change and you're going over to the next controller just to make sure that they know that you're the emergency aircraft. And so he's already into the emergency aircraft mode. He just missed the part where he said, he didn't say Mayday. That's okay. This, these guys are busy. They got a lot going on. Yeah, we're, uh, we had a bird. We had to pull back number two. So we're just going to return back to Miami. Okay, let me explain that. what he means by that. This is what I'm saying. It's a little head scratcher. We had to pull back number two. You're saying, what does that mean? Okay, there's two engines on the airplane, number one and number two, the left and the right engine. So he's already declared what engine it is, but he said we had to pull it back. What does that mean to you and me? Uh, that means the engine didn't fail outright, but because they hit the bird, it might be sputtering, it might be failing, it might be diminished power. Uh, if they've got a checklist on their aircraft and there's a bird strike, checklist on the aircraft, it's going to tell you to pull the power back on the engine until it runs normally. So most pilots are going to say, okay, if I got some strange indications out of that engine, I just hit a bird. I don't know whether that engine's about to come apart altogether, whether I'm going to get a little thrust out of it, whether I'm going to get a lot of thrust out of it. And honestly, I don't need that engine at all. So let's not mess around with it. So they're going to grab that engine. They're both going to concur that they've got the proper engine. The, the pilot at the controls is going to pull back the throttle until they get and they see normal indications. Once they get to that point, they're probably going to leave it alone. If it's all the way back to idle, you know what? It's the same as though they've lost an engine. Now, could they push power back up on that engine in an emergency if they needed it? So at this point, it's not a total engine failure, but they have pulled the power back on the engine. And that's what he means. Pull back on number two. Go to 1399, Roger. It's clear to mind me via red or vessel, you said I left the runway nine unless you want something else. Yep, that sounds great. Uh, we might have to have some delay vectors just to set everything up, but we'll expect uh, radar vectors, runway 9, back to 9. So the 1399, come on, maintain 4000, fighting 240. Let me know when you're ready to go. 240, 4000, we'll let you know, 1399. Okay, so great communication back and forth between the air traffic controller and this crew. The crew sounds calm. They sound in control. That's great. The air traffic controller is saying to them, let me know how much time you need. I'm going to give you some vectors around. Right now, as we're looking at it, they're headed away from the airport. And you think, well, don't they want to stay right on top of the airport? Not really. The airplane flies just fine on one engine. And in this case, they've got like one and a half engines, all right, because they've got that other one in reserve. They've just pulled back the power on it, but it's still running. So they're going to take them down. Excuse me. They're going to take them down south just a little bit uh, on this one while they take the time to do all of their checklists. What checklists are they doing? Well, they're doing that bird strike checklist. They're doing an engine failure checklist. They're doing an overweight checklist, and they're doing a precautionary landing checklist. That means they're coming back early. They have to brief the flight attendants that they're coming back early. They're coming back to Miami. The flight attendants most likely haven't gotten anything out yet. All right. They're, they were still below 10,000 feet. So they're probably still in their seats. So they're going to now <coughs> brief the flight attendants on what's going on. Then they're going to make their way around back to the airport slowly after they do all of their checklists. They've got to make a PA to the passengers. And they also have to talk to dispatch at their company and let them know that they're going back into Miami. So there's a lot going on. You're going to hear another voice here in a minute um, from the captain when he chimes in to explain his thoughts on this. But so far, pretty good job. And number 1399, you got a chance for me to get fuel and souls on board. Fuel and souls on board. That's always the case. Yeah, we have 152 souls on board, four hours of fuel remaining. That's uh, 24,000 pounds. Very good communication. Go to 1399, and also any good chance any hazmat on board and uh, any known damage to the aircraft. Now, this is a new question that they've started asking. Any hazmat on board? It hasn't been for my entire career that they asked it. That. What's hazmat? Hazardous material. They want to know if there's anything that in case there's an accident with this airplane on the ground that the firefighters need to know about. Um, now, they can check that out on the manifest, but it's quicker communication if they get it right straight from the pilots. Uh, again, there's 
time is of the essence here, so they don't have a lot of time to go look up all the stuff that's on the manifest. Uh, this airplane might already be on the ground or worse before they get to all of that information. So they ask the pilots directly, he says, nope, no hazmats uh, on the aircraft and uh, no hazmat and uh, uh, there, we don't know what the damage is to the aircraft. Yeah, you know, th that's always a silly question to me because I'm like, I can't see. I don't know. Uh, we don't know about the known damage. We had to pull back once because we had engine surges, but uh, no hazmat on board. Okay, so he just told us what happened. They had engine surges, right? And that's a compressor stall will do that. You'll get that out of the engine. And that might mean that the engine is out of sync somewhere. Maybe it's lost a blade inside. It, that's all bad damage. And it's still running. It's still spinning. But you don't want to mess around with that. So you're going to pull that engine back to idle, get it down to its lowest possible RPM. As long as the surging stops, you're good to not have to shut it down. Uh, but that's exactly what's happened. That's all he knows so far. He can't see any other damage. Roger. Roger says ATC. And over 1399, sorry for the question. So just want to confirm that you still got both engines, Chris. Affirmative, Delta 1399. We still have both engines. However, one engine has been damaged enough that we have to bring it back to idle power. Okay, so you're hearing a different voice now. Now, you've heard me say this before on this channel. It's probably the captain, right? I, as a co-pilot, would never override my captain and say, I got this. The captain many times will say, I don't have time to relay it through you. Just let me talk to him directly. So I'm guessing this is a captain. Um, <clears throat> he says, uh, tells him what's going on, uh, that both engines are running, but they've had to pull it back because of the bird strike. Um, and he's going to say, we're essentially treating this like a single engine because it is. Uh, in training, when we do this sort of thing, when we fail fail an engine in training uh, in the real aircraft, I don't actually fail the engine. I just pull the power back to idle. And then I say to my student, you've got a single engine aircraft right now, knowing that if I need that other engine, I can grab that power. In this case, nah, I'm not so sure they're going to get that. But let's see, let's see how they come around the pattern. So we're essentially treating it like a single engine. Treating That's it like a single thing. engine. That's very prudent and wise. And Delta 1399, I could definitely confirm we did probably uh, have a bird. I did see a bird come off the right side of the aircraft and strike the aircraft. It probably got us. Okay, this is like your kid talking to you. He says, I can definitely probably <laughs> confirm. All right. So it's either definitely or it's probably. My kids would do that all the time, and I'd catch them, and I'd say, you know, is it probably or is it definitely? He's just getting tongue-tied. Um, uh, he doesn't want to be as definitive as that, but this was a bird strike, and he knows it. Driving. It's kind of funny. Delta 1399, which engine is it? Right side engine, Delta 1399. Right side engine. All right, so they're taking him down south. Delta 1399, turn left, 090. Left turn, 090. Delta now, the controller is going to bring start to bring him back around. This is this is in lieu of a holding pattern, what he's doing with these guys right now. Delta 1399, continue left turn, 060. Continue left turn, 060, Delta 1399. Right. So they're not really very far away from the airport altogether. Still working on checklists Delta at this point. 1399, turn left heading 340. Left heading 340, The other things that they have to do in the cockpit is they have to run uh, an overweight Delta checklist. Take as long as you need, but just so I know if I get to close to the airport, so any idea how much longer? No, we can start heading back now, 1399. Okay, so they've probably got most of their checklist done at this point, but they have to, to run the landing distance for the aircraft, for an overweight aircraft, make sure that they've got enough runway to land on. That's another thing in the iPad that they have to do. They have to communicate with the flight attendants, with the passengers, with the dispatch. All of that stuff takes time, especially looking up the stuff in the iPad. Then they have to brief the approach. So they've known for a while it was going to be the ILS to runway 9, but now, right about now, they're bringing up the ILS to runway 9. They're putting it in the computer. Then they're looking at it in the iPad and they're briefing the approach back and forth to make sure that they don't create a secondary problem now that they have an engine out. Okay, 340 ILS runway 9. 340 ILS runway 9 and we uh, are requesting ARF to meet us at the end of the runway. We're just going to stop on the runway. Okay, ARF is air Airport Rescue and Firefighting. That's the fire trucks. So they are requesting it. They're making that, uh, uh, they're confirming that. Uh, and they also said, we're going to stop on the runway. Most uh, pilots will do that. Why do they stop on the runway? Because it clogs up the whole airport. Couldn't they just taxi off? There's enough concrete around the airport for all those fire trucks to get a good look. Why are they concerned? The engine isn't on fire. No, but something else could happen. And landing overweight, you're going to put a lot more stress on the brakes and you could overheat the brakes. I want those fire trucks to get all the way around my aircraft. So in case one of my brakes lights up on fire, they can put it out immediately. That's a smart pilot. 
Yeah, it's still already standing by waiting for you. Perfect, thanks. So he's confirmed. They closed the loop on all this communication. Great. Uh, yeah, it's going to be an overweight landing for sure. All right. So they're probably done briefing the approach at this point. Miami Delta 1399, emergency aircraft 4000, heading 320. Delta 1399, Miami approach uh, is going to maintain 3000. And how long, uh, how far of a final would you like? It's going to maintain 3000, Delta 1399. And uh, yes, yes, at least uh, three miles outside of grid. That would be appreciated. Delta 1399, fighting 2900. Okay, so why did the air traffic controller ask him that question? How much, how long a final do you want? He wants to make sure he's had enough time to get everything done that he needs to get done. He doesn't want to rush this aircraft. This isn't like trying to fit people in, you know, a normal aircraft, everything's going fine. You know, everybody's on their A game. You're going to squeeze one airplane in front of another and behind another, and you're, you're trying to get them on the runway as fast as you can. They want to give these guys as much breathing space as they can possibly give them. So he asked them that question. That's great. This is an experienced controller talking to two experienced pilots. They're all doing a great job of communicating and closing the communication loop as they go. Really important. We'll speed it up for you a little bit. Um, they go three miles outside of grid. Turn right, heading 350. Turn right to a northerly heading. They're going to intercept final for runway nine. I've shot this ILS so many times. 1399, you're three miles from grid. Turn right, heading 060, maintain 3,000 full service on a little larger good ILS runway nine approach. Clear for the ILS, yeah, runway nine. Hey, they read it back. That closes the loop. Delta thirteen ninety nine towers one two three point nine. Or the traffic go ahead and tail left one of the north parallel runway. After that, thanks for all the help. Thirteen ninety nine over tower twenty. Flaps are down at this point. Gears coming down hey, pretty soon. Thirteen ninety nine uh, ILS runway nine approaching. Delta thirteen ninety nine Miami Tower wind three three zero at six runway nine clear to land. Runway 9, clear to land, Delta 1399, we'll stop on the runway. Yep. Generally speaking, by the time you talk to the tower, the gear's down. So he's just confirming one more time, we're going to stop on the runway. Full length, runway 9 Good is job. Uh, yours, no traffic converging for 1-2. Excellent, thanks. The whole runway is yours. Take as much runway as you need. Don't overheat the brakes, in other words. So here they touch down, so they roll all, all the way right out. There. You're going to have the fire commander now on. Previously, you can talk to you. You just hold the position right there. And he's coming to set you up now. You can talk to him now. And the last bit of really important communication is that thing that the tower just said to the aircraft, which is the fire chief will be on this frequency. So in other words, you don't have to dial up any other frequencies to talk to the guy in the fire truck that's circling your aircraft right now. So you can simply key up the mic and say, hey, fire chief, it's me, Captain Steve. And what do you see on the outside of my aircraft? And he's going to say, give me a minute. And he's going to take those those big old uh, heat guns out and he's going to point it that laser beam right at your uh, your discs on your tires. And he's going to have a readout and going to go, ah, that's a pretty good temperature. I don't think we're going to get a fire today. He does it on all of the tires. Reports back to you, says your tires are hot, but they're not too hot. I don't think you're going to have a fire. I think you're clear to taxi to the gate. I go, thanks a lot. You see anything else out there? Nope. No, sir, have a good day. And we salute each other, and off we go. We do it all in the same frequency. It saves a whole bunch of time and a lot of confusion, that's for sure. This one turned out pretty well. Great communication. This is, in. I, if I graded this, this is an A+, plus, both by ATC and by this crew. They did a great job communicating all the way around the pattern and getting this into a safe conclusion, having lost, well, half an engine. And we'll call it that. Well, now you know. I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe. And it seems like people are losing engines left and right these days. If you want to see another video on an aircraft that lost an engine and the crew did a great job handling it, check out this video here.